uh, Psalm chapter 46 uh, from verse 1 to verse 11. Uh, I request that we be given the scriptures right there on the board. Uh, read the 11 verses and pray before we begin singing. Can we read together? God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear into two. He burns the chariots in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Hallelujah. Uh, look at verse 4. The Bible says, There is a river. Now, verse 3 says, Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, the Bible says there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Hallelujah. And this morning as we gather, we believe that the Lord will release a river in our midst. Bible says there is a river uh, whose streams shall make glad the city of God. And this is a river of life. This is a river of grace. This is a river that will bring increase and abundance. This is a river that will bring prosperity. This is a river that will bring healing. I don't know what your need is this morning. As we wait on the Lord and as we minister to the Lord, every of our needs shall be uh, met. Every of our desires shall be fulfilled. Because there is a river, the Bible says, whose streams shall make glad the city of the Lord. And therefore this morning as we worship, we believe there will be refreshing. We believe that uh, there will be a cleansing and purification that will take place as we wait on the Lord. If that is your desire, if that, that is your hope, we can lift our voices for the remaining two minutes. And just pray that that river will flow and uh, will begin to bring increase, uh, refreshing, healing, whatever it is, you, uh, whatever it is. Uh, a need in your heart. Just lift your head uh, to the Lord, your hand to the Lord and your heart to the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for bringing us uh, to this house. Father, we thank you for you are our Father. We gather to you as to our Father. We gather to you, O oh Lord, for we know that you are uh, our provider. You provide us with all the things we desire. You fulfill the desire of each one of us, O oh God. Lord, I pray as we wait on you, as we minister to you, Lord, as your word says that there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. We are your city. We are your city. And you will release a river. You will cause a river to flow from your presence, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And may this river bring joy in our hearts. May this river bring gladness in our hearts, O oh God. May this river cause rejoicing. May this river cause a liberty to those that may be bound, O oh God. May this river bring increase, bring abundance, bring prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Shakaraba, Yanderebo Zakata, Yarakapo Zaka. Lord, I pray the streams of the river that flow, that will flow from your presence, O oh God, will bring healing to the hearts of your people, to the souls of your people, to their bodies, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, will bring increase and abundance and prosperity 
Mashakataraba, Yareka Selama. Hey, the river will bring a cleansing and purification of our minds, of our spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Sharakasena, Yareka Sora. Let there be such refreshing in this house. Let there be such a refreshing. Let there be such a refreshing. Marakasera, Sharama, the river that waters the garden of the Lord. The river that waters the garden of the Lord. I pray the river will water this house. The river will refresh this city in the name of Jesus. Shakata Raba, Yarahande, Mahande Rebozana. Lord, I pray that the hearts of your people will be open. Oh, Lord, I pray our hearts are open to receive grace, to receive grace, to receive life, to receive a blessing in the name of our Lord. Whatever it is that may hinder the flow of the river, Lord, I pray that this morning you are removing it. You are removing it, oh God, including unbeliever and a hardness of a heart, oh God, and bitterness and all manner of the works of the flesh. All I pray, none of those things will stand on your way this morning. None of those things will stand on your way this morning. But all I pray that you will come into this house as a mighty river. There will be a rushing forth of this mighty river in the name of Jesus. You will come to us this morning as a great abundant rain in the name of our Lord. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's put our hands together and receive Paul Karaoke as he leads us on.
about that one more time. You did not wait. You did not wait for me to draw near to you. To draw near to you. But you clothed yourself. But you clothed yourself in frail humanity. God, you did not wait for me. You did not wait for me to cry out to you. Cry out to you. But you let me hear. this very fast to verse 39. This ties into the theme that we've been going through for about increase and also the theme of Easter. So let me read from the King James Version. For whom he did for no, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called, I mean, verse 30, and whom he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified, that he won. What shall we say? To these things. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also do what? Freely give us? How many things? All things. Verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. Verse 34. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, that if I, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, or tri distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for the sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, nay, in all things, things we are more than conquerors through him that did what? That loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded, tell your neighbor, I am persuaded. There's a different scripture that says that we are persuaded of the good things that accompany salvation. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, bless his name because we are inseparable from his love. Hallelujah!
Cognizant and aware, assumptive, presumptive of the fact that the woman is barren. But it is God who gives the command that we do what? Sing and we shout. That is according to Isaiah chapter 54. Hallelujah. Because the work that He is doing in, among us, Habakkuk will say that even if you are told, you will not believe it. So we shout, we praise, sometimes not in the goodness of the circumstances surrounding us. But we do it in faith Amen. because we know him whom we have believed in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sometimes these shouts, we're not shouting because we had a better week than you. Not necessarily. But we are persuaded. Hallelujah. We are persuaded. There has to be a persuasion. You cannot work on feelings. Amen. You have to be grounded on something more solid. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's go back to that chant. Same, same tempo. As we do one more song before we call it a rap. All right, so we are on uh, D. All right. Hey! Clap your hands. Come on! 
been speaking to us in the recent past that he desires to increase our greatness and comfort us on every side. He has also spoken uh, to us that he wants us to prosper in all things and be in health as our souls prosper. That he desires to bring us to rich fulfillment. He has also uh, spoken to us that he desires to increase our boundaries uh, so that we be like a city that has no walls. For that and many other things that the Lord has spoken to you. Let's just lift our hands and pray that those things will become a reality to us. That the Lord will truly increase us. He will increase our greatness. And he will make us to become a, a great, great nation. A fruitful nation for the praise of his name. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you as we are gathered here. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you have spoken in our hearing. That you desire to increase our greatness 
and to comfort us on every side. You desire that we may become fruitful in all ways, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, therefore, this day we lay our lives before you, O oh God, that you may use us, that you may make us, that you may prepare us to become the vessel that will represent you in our generation. In the name of Jesus, even as we have just sung, that you are making us to become ambassadors, that we may represent you on the earth. In the name of our Lord, I pray that you work through every one of us here, that you will truly increase us, you will truly make us great. In the name of our Lord, that we will become a city that has no walls for the increase, for the abundant measure of cattle and men in it, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, Lord, I pray as many of us as are gathered here and as many of us as are called by the, the name of this house, Lord, I pray you will cause us to rise in one spirit that will become truly great, will become truly great, and you will bring us to reach your fulfillment. In the name of our Lord, even those who have been downtrodden together, you will cause us to come to a rich fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We honor you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and appreciate the Lord as we take our seats and the ministers wait on us. Uh, we get ready to break bread. Uh, today we are commemorating uh, the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so let the ministers come and wait on us uh, and we come with the love of Christ, the love of Christ uh, in our hearts. The Bible says, as often as you uh, break the bread, do this in remembrance of me. Today we come to remember the suffering of uh, the Lord on the cross. We come to remember how he laid down his life for us. We come remembering the great love. We come remembering the love of God. The Bible says that he who did not spare his own son and uh, gave, him, uh, gave him up that he may die on the cross for our sins. How shall he not together with him give us all things? So as we come, as we draw near the table this morning, we come remembering the love of Christ. We come remembering the many things that Christ had to go through, Jesus had to go through for our sake.
Wasanihu Wastahili Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Luke 9:23 Then Jesus said to them all If anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me For whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost. Today we come remembering uh, you know the way Christ suffered, the way he laid down his life that we may live. And therefore everything uh, Christ did and everything Christ went through, we also in like manner must go through so that we may become his disciples. Several things he did, he carried his own cross, so we also must carry our own cross. He was crucified, so shall we also be crucified. Crucify the flesh and die daily so that the life of Christ may be at work in us. He was also buried, so we also must be buried. Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 3, Or do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So Jesus carried his cross, we must carry our cross, he was crucified and died. We also must crucify the flesh and die to self so that the life of Christ may be at work in us. He was buried, so shall we also be buried together with him. And that is our responsibility. We take the cross, we die, we get crucified, we get buried, uh, so that God's responsibility uh, may also begin to be at work in us. And God's responsibility is to resurrect us with Christ. And resurrection is not the end of the journey. Uh, we also uh, uh, should ascend with him because after he resurrected, he also ascended. And after that, he sat with a God that is at the right hand of the Father. So when we carry the cross, when we die, when we get crucified, when we get buried, he will make us to resurrect. He will make us to ascend with him. And the Bible says that we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. Is that a good journey? So let's just uh, pray that uh, the Lord will give us a grace to crucify our flesh daily. Carry our cross daily, get crucified daily, die daily, uh, so that we resurrect with him, so that we ascend with him, and so that we get uh, seated together with him in the majesty on high. Father, we thank you. As we come remembering you, we remember the way you carried the cross, the way you died, the way you were buried, the way you resurrected the way you ascended, and today you are sitting at the right hand of the Father. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you give each one of us the grace to carry our cross daily, to die daily, to be crucified daily. Lord, I pray that you will cause us to be buried together with you, so that we also may be resurrected together with you, ascend together with you, and be seated with you in the majesty on high. As we partake of these physical elements, we remember such great love, the love that you showed us in giving your only begotten son that he may die so that we may live. Lord, I pray that you cause us to acknowledge that love. And as you have loved us, so we also love you back. And as you have loved us, we also love one another in the name of Jesus. And so that the nations and the ends of the earth may know that we are your disciples on account of how we love one another. We bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Let's partake together.
This is a good moment for you to rise and uh, shake the hand of your neighbor. Uh, get to greet uh, the person sitting next to you. Welcome uh, him or her into the service this morning. I've just given you an opportunity to greet your neighbor. <laughs> Please take advantage of that. Uh, make sure that you greet uh, the one in front of you, the one at the back, the one next to you. Uh, let's share love and life in this house. We are a family. We love one another. And we receive one another. Thank you. Once you make sure that you have greeted your neighbors, you may now take your seat. Uh, take your seat uh, so that we uh, journey together. Wow, this is a lovely morning and you're all, all looking very great, uh, very beautiful and very handsome in the presence of the Lord. I want to run down the notices this morning. Um, and we want to begin by acknowledging our guests. We want to begin by appreciating all those who are here in Fountain Gate for the very first time. This is your very first time to fellowship with us in Fountain Gate want to let you know that uh, you are much appreciated, much appreciated, and we would want to appreciate you better uh, if you show us by show of hand, so we can acknowledge you, come to where you are, and put something in your hand. Anyone who is here for the first time, uh, kindly indicate by show of hand. Uh, yes, we have our sister over there. We have one uh, more sister over here. Yes. Any other guests? So we will ask our sisters to kindly stand on your feet so that we can see you and come to where you are and put something in your hand. Our sisters, please stand up. Yes, and those around them, let's appreciate them. There was another guest around here. Oh, yes, our sister. Yes, yes. Let's appreciate our guests this morning. Thank you very much for finding time to be together with us, our sisters. We are really honored to have you. Um, uh, fellowship with us this morning, and uh, we appreciate you. At uh, the end of this service, we will request you not to be in a hurry because of what one of our elders, Eamon Mwangeka, will uh, share a glass of juice with you in that room over there written um, uh, <coughs> the guest lounge. And that's where we'll meet with you, share a glass of juice with you as we get to know you better and give you an opportunity to also know us. Could we appreciate our guests one more time? Yeah, and just in case you're looking for a church, this is a great family, this is a good church. Look no further. The children's education will take place today during the service, and uh, the parents are asked to prepare. Our parents are asked to prepare. The next children's education will take place uh, on Sunday, the 7th of April, this coming Sunday. Uh, this coming Sunday, we have uh, a number of children that needs to be dedicated. So let's have the parents register with Leroy Murioki uh, for the same. We are all invited to the Youth Recharge Convocation, which will take place on Wednesday, the 10th of April, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary. All the teens, the generation greatness, and the excellent generation, basically all the overcomers. The overcomers will comprise of the teens, the GG, and the excellent generation are requested to register via the Google uh, form provided and also invite friends. And this is not just for the overcomers. All of us are invited. And let's all be there. We are invited to the Women of Grace, which will begin from Friday the 12th to Sunday the 14th of April here in the sanctuary. We are asked to uh, plan to attend, uh, plan to uh, be ready to serve, and also invite our friends. And to that, to that end, to that end, this Friday, this Friday, Friday the 5th of uh, April, we will be having the next extended prayer gathering. Extended prayer gathering. Uh, and we will pray predominantly uh, for the women of grace. Uh, the extended prayer gathering this Friday the 5th of April from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Uh, please give us a flyer. Uh, we are requested to attend and also invite 
the friends. Okay. Okay. We are encouraged to pray, support, and also um, support our father, Apostle James and Dr. Lucy um, Bugua in the forthcoming. Okay. Okay, we had uh, the flyer for the extended uh, meeting. It's okay, that's the flyer. Uh, this Friday, 6 p.m. to 8.30. It's okay. Uh, so, we are encouraged to pray and support our father, Apostle James and Dr. Lucy, in the forthcoming mission uh, to Kilgoris. Um, this is Kilgoris, Kilgoris uh, Leadership Summit 2024 uh, from 17th to 19th of April at KAG Sanctuary of Hope in Kilgoris. So uh, let's get more details from uh, Leroy, all those who would want to accompany Apostle James and support in any way. Uh, get uh, more details from Leroy Murioki uh, so that we can plan uh, on transport arrangements. All our weekly uh, gathering will continue as scheduled except for Friday. Uh, Friday we will be praying and uh, fasting the whole day, uh, but we will not meet online the way we are used to but we will gather here during the Kesha. And lastly, the wedding bands. We are pleased to announce the wedding between Matthew Kiari Ngure and Sheila Mukoa Hakame, which will be held on Saturday, the 6th of April. Saturday, the 6th of April. That is this coming Saturday at Leilani Gardens in Kikuyu from 10 a.m., and this is the last announcement. We know them. And should you have any reason why these two shall not be celebrated in a holy matrimony, please come forward and raise your objections. And I hope your objections will be valid. And today in the afternoon, they will be having their pre-wedding in the Malpapas Hall. So uh, please let all be there to support them. And lastly, we will be having uh, our children dedication. And I want to call uh, the parents to the front uh, for this very great ordinance. So we bless the Lord that uh, today we'll be uh, dedicating three children, and the first one is Adia Pal Wema. Adia Pal Wema. This is a firstborn daughter uh, born to Amon and Stacy Bet. Wow, let's appreciate this family. Finally. The Lord has been very gracious to this family. Please come over here. Let's appreciate them as uh, they come until they get to the front. This is Amon and Stasi Bet. And then the next is uh, Judah Amani Moreo. Judah. Oh, and our mother is here. Let's appreciate our mom. And for this reason, let all the relatives, Amelia, please join, join all the relatives of this great family. Oh, Atta Grace. <laughs> Grace is already a relative in advance. Yes. Kujeni, uh, you are Yes. This is David. This is David. Uh, thank you. Then we have uh, Judah Amani Moreu. This is a firstborn son born to David and Nancy Moreo. Uh, let's appreciate. <laughs> let's appreciate this family. Awesome. And lastly, we have Nathaniel Tendai Ngoge. Nathaniel Tendai Ngoge. Nathaniel Tendai Ngoge. This is a a second-born son, born to Sami and Nelly Ngoge. Sami and Nelly Ngoge. Let's appreciate them. They are right over here. And at this juncture, I will be uh, inviting on stage our father, Apostle James, to lead us on in the process of dedication. Let's appreciate Pastor James as he comes. Amen. Good morning, saints. I said good morning. I think my own has some energy. Yours seems to be very weak. Let's try one more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You tried, but you can do better than that. You can do, okay, let's say hallelujah. I think that will, that will be better. Are you ready for this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
All right. Before we dedicate the children, there's a song on my spirit, and I want you to sing it while you're sitting there. But maybe you can close your eyes and say with me, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. We praise His name, for He has risen. The dead and he is Lord and every knee, every knee, lift your voice, shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ he is Lord. We'll take, we'll do it one more time, but instead of talking about he, like you are referring to somebody very far away, this is our father. This is our Lord, this is our savior. So we're we'll seeing you are. Is that okay? You are Lord. You are Lord. I praise your name for you have risen from the dead and you are and my knee and my knee shall bow and my tongue confess that Jesus Christ you Sing it in Swahili if you can. You boana, you boana, you boana, you boana. O si fiwe, o me fufu ka kifoni u boana. Na kila. Ukili kwamba Yesu diye boana. Look at two, three, four people. Tell them you boana. He is Lord. You boana. He is Lord. One person, two people, three people. Come on, lift your voice and say He is Lord. Come on. Oh yes. Look at someone and say He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Amen. I sense the spirit of victory in this room as we shout and as we talk about the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're so grateful to God that we have these three families who came to thank God. They also came to acknowledge the Lord in this year increase. Firstborn to Adia, Paul. I mean, firstborn, sorry, to Amon and Stacey Beth. Uh, third born to David and Nancy Moreu, and second born to Sami and Nelly Gogi. As always, in keeping with scriptures, it is parents who present their own children before the Lord. And as always, it is parents who are the first ones to pronounce what they believe or what they have seen is God's plan and purpose and blessing over their children before we, the ministers, uh, who preside over the same can be able to speak a blessing over the children. And uh, in the interest of time, I will ask that uh, uh, we go into it straight away. And so let's have baby Adia Par Wema Bet uh, dedicated to the Lord with a prayer of blessing and prophecy by uh, her parents. Please go ahead, Amon and Stacy Bet. Thank you. Good morning, church. It's a great joy and honor to dedicate our daughter to the Lord today. Thank you. Uh, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. A dear Paul Wema Bet, you are truly a perfect gift to us, and we thank God for bringing you into our lives. Today, we are overjoyed to dedicate you to the Lord and to commend you to his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the saints. As your name, Adia, means a jewel, God's treasure, a precious possession, and a gemstone to treasure, so are you precious to God and us. We pray that you live to honor the Lord 
serve him diligently, and love the Lord your God in your generation. The Lord will take special care of you, watch over you, protect you, and love you just as he loved his begotten son. May you always hear his voice and keep his covenant, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, throughout your life. Paul, you are a precious crystal with beauty, purity, and elegance that symbolizes perfection in the kingdom of heaven. You are called to embody the qualities of love, forgiveness, faith, obedience, purpose, fearlessness, and prayer in your life. The Lord will equip you with all that you need and bless your comings and goings. You will be a city set high on a hill that will bring light to the world and your generation. And the Lord will use you for his glory. As your name, Wema, means goodness, indeed, the Lord answered us out of his goodness when he asked for a child. So, Wema, daima udhirishe Wema moyoni na katika matendo yako. Na Wema wa Kristo uangaze kupitia kwa kwa kila siku. And so today in the presence of the Lord, family, friends, and brethren, we dedicate you a dear pal Wema Bet, our firstborn daughter, to the Lord. We love you. Kichamin, waheri. You are now dedicated to the Lord. Amen. 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 Let me pray a short prayer of our baby, a dear pal, Wema Bet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this baby that you have put in the hands of these your servants and sons, Amon and Stacy Bet. This baby has been born for a purpose. We see in this baby that seed that you talked about, the seed of the woman that would crush the head of the serpent. We see connected to this child her destiny that is in Christ. And so, Father, we commend her to your word and to your spirit. And we pray that from as early as now, she will know your ways, she will know your word. As her parents have blessed her, Lord, we add on to that same blessing. And we declare that for a purpose she has been born. May that purpose never be thwarted by anything or anyone. We ask for provision for her parent, to her parents so that they will never lack any resource, anything they need to raise her in the ways of God. Father, we pray in faith this day that baby Adia will never lose her walk with you. She will be guided by the light of your countenance. And from as well as now, she will have this love for God and she will, she will pursue God. And Father, we pray that as she seeks you, she will find you. As she seeks you with all her heart, she will find you. And you show her things, things that no man, no man knows about. Things that no eye have seen, no ear heard, no heart of man has conceived. The things that you have prepared for her. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to this world, baby Adia. May you be guided and led by the light of the countenance of God. All the days of your life, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone say amen. amen. Let's have the second baby, baby Judah Amani. Born to David and Nancy Mori. Go ahead. Good morning, church. It is our joy to dedicate our third born and our second boy. Judah Amani Moreu, we dedicate you to the Lord this 31st day of March 2024. Today, before the brethren and the cloud of witness, we declare you are the Lord's. You will walk in the seventh dimension of the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord for the glory of God. Like the sons of Issachar, you understood times and seasons. You will be a prophetic voice in your generation, divinely understanding what God is doing and what the people need to do to align themselves. Like Daniel, you will have the spirit of excellence. No wisdom of men, little and unlitten, will be too hard for you to comprehend. You will have the encounter of Samuel that brings you clarity of purpose at a young age, and the Lord will give you a spirit like Elijah to accurately accomplish the good works that, the, that he has prepared before for 
before beforehand for you to do. The Lord will lay your stones with colorful games and lay your foundations with sapphires. He will make you pinnacles of rubies, your gate of Christos, and all your walls of precious stones. You will be taught by the Lord, and you, you will have peace all, all out. The Lord will make, make all grace about toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, you have an abundance for every good work. Judah Amani Moreu, you are the Lord's, and as long as you live, you are dedicated to the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. We want to agree with the parents in the prayer of blessing that they have pronounced over their son, Judah Amani Moreu. Father, we thank you for this baby. We thank you that for the redemption of many, he has been born. We thank you that on finding your will and purpose for his life, he will serve you. He will bring joy and delight to your heart. In and through his life, O oh God, you will touch many. And therefore we pray, Lord, in his upbringing, that he will grow, he will increase in wisdom, that he will grow and increase in stature. We pray for good health. We pray for strength. We pray that you keep him from all manner of evil. I pray, Lord, as he increases also in favor with God, that from a young and tender age, he will know your ways. He will love your word. He will love prayer. We pray, Lord, that he will be one that will be beloved to many, favored by many, and loved in every circle, wherever he goes. We ask that the banner of favor be the singular, most visible thing about this baby boy, that wherever he goes, he will be favored. He'll be favored in and out of the city. He'll be favored in and out of the country. We declare, Lord Jesus, that together with the prophetic word pronounced by his parents, and the much more that is locked up in your heart, that this child will grow to know you in depth, to know you to the detail. In the name of the Father and the Son, we bless, we bless this child. Amen and amen. 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 Let's come to the third baby here. Baby Nathaniel Tendai Ngoge, born to Sami and Nel Ngoge. Please go ahead. Buenas fue Kanisa. Uh, with me here is my family and my wife and my daughter. And this is Nathaniel Tendai Ngugi, the one who comes by God. The Lord has made our hearts glad once again to receive you into our lives and bring you up in his will. By God, we provoke a grateful heart in you for God, just as your name Nathaniel and Tendai means. You will grow in favor before God and men. You will easily surmount heights because the Lord defines skin truths in you for God's own glory. You will walk before God knowingly. You will do great exploits and be fruitful in the country and in the city. Your bow will be strong, your hand unrelenting in bringing to be that which is the will of God. You are not tied down, not bearing chains. You are beholden only to God. Your claim and portion is only in Christ, in God. The Lord is your portion, your pursuit, all your love in seeking. God will guide you into his truth so that in a world of great theories, the word of God will be a hidden treasure in your heart, a guiding truth through it all. You will not struggle to perform justice, not afraid to show mercy, turning hearts to God in gratitude. Nathaniel Tendai, you are of God for God. In all you are doing and becoming, you will be defined in God. You will love solitude of God. The Holy Spirit is already upon you. May you be with a psalm and a hymn for God, a poem for God, the rest of God, the rest of God giving you to be tireless in the things of God as God defines for you. Today we bring you to God who knows our end from the beginning, that he'll be the biggest person at any given instance in your life, and he may always be able to rule from your heart. We, your parents, dedicate you to God, our marvelous God whose gracious word can make you into what he wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need among those who are sanctified. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's agree with uh, Sami and Nelly Ngoge in dedicating the son Nathaniel Tendai Ngoge to the Lord. Father, we agree with uh, Nathaniel's parents that they have voluntarily decided to dedicate him to your house. 
May this dedication speak to him forever and ever. In whatever he does and wherever he goes, may this dedication and act of faith by his parents always speak into his life. We ask that, Lord, your light to shine on the path of his journey. All the days of his journey on planet Earth, may he be guided not by the philosophies of men, not by the traditions of men, not by religion, but may he be guided by the light of your countenance. Lead him and guide him, we pray, O oh God. Amen. We pray that there will be provision enough Amen. in the hands of his parents and all that you will ever put around his life. Amen. And so that he will never lack all the sufficiency Amen. of the grace and resources he needs to become that man that you have desired for him. We do thank you, O oh God. We bless your holy name. We pray, Lord, as according to the desire and the prayer of his parents, may he be a light that will shine in a dark, dark world. May he speak volumes to uh, relatives that are connected to his parents. Oh, God, may he be a fast in many ways. May he be a fast in many ways, even among his cousins, even among other relatives, oh, God. Do certain things in his life. And though he is second born uh, to his parents, we invoke, we invoke on him the firstborn, first fruit blessing Amen. because we are all firstborns in Christ Jesus. May he never lack behind in any way. May he never lack anything good. Father, we pray that he will find all provision and all grace for the life and the ministry for which he has come into this world. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, parents, for uh, doing this. This is very, very important. When a parent by faith dedicates their children to the Lord, uh, the Bible says then they will not depart from that way that you have designed for, uh, for them. I will ask Pastor Isaac to be the one to hand over the manual as well as the certificate of dedication to each one of you, one after the other, and then we will go to the next thing before we progress with the rest of the service. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Do you have a first? Yeah, we have a first-time parent. You have never handled that manual. You uh, tasoma utakuwa professor. Na ufanyisha hiyo masomo kazi tafadhali. And those who are uh, parents for the second time, others for the third time, that manual will help you. There is also a certificate of dedication. Which that's an official document, and you could use it where it is required. Some people bring an offering on the day they dedicate their children or whatever else to the Lord. If you brought any offering, we have a basket right here. Please do that. And then after that, I will ask the parents to go and sit down so that we can progress with the rest of the service. Can we appreciate the parents as they go back to their seats? Thank you very much. Yeah, let's appreciate the Lord for that awesome time. And also, I uh, appreciate Apostle James for leading us so well. Uh, this is great. And uh, parents, we encourage you to keep up with the good work. We don't mind dedicating children every Sunday. Every Sunday. So at this uh, point, we want to bless our children as they go to their class. And uh, I'll ask them to be standing wherever they are. And I want to bring on stage my wife who will uh, pray and bless the children. So watoto wote tafadhali popote mlipo, simameni. Uh, dio tuweze kuwabariki. So watoto wasimame, that we bless you this morning. Father, we are grateful this morning for this great, strong, and mighty generation that you are raising in this house. We bless them this morning. We pray, dear Lord, that they shall never depart from your ways. We pray none of these children, none of this generation will deviate from your ways, O oh God. But I pray they will overcome the world. They will resist the world. My Father, we pray that they will serve your purpose in their day and in their time. In the name of Jesus, they shall be bold to proclaim your word. Even as we live in these worldly times, I pray this generation from this house will be able to defend the word of God, to speak the word of God, to proclaim the word of God in their different spaces in the name of Jesus. 
We also bless them this morning as they go to their classes. We bless their teachers. We speak strength. We speak wisdom. We speak knowledge, O oh God, as they impart them, O oh God, with the word of God. There shall be grace. There shall be the flow of God and of life in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate my wife. We bless the Lord. I really appreciate the support she gives me uh, in the course of my life and ministry. <clears throat> so, watoto tafadhali pole pole, you may go to your class, go to your class, and uh, I request uh, as, uh, as the children have left a few uh, chairs vacant, please rise up as we get ready to worship the Lord. Rise up and occupy the chair that is uh, ahead of you. If there is a vacant chair, uh, please let's do, uh, do so. Occupy them. Quite a number have been left vacant. Let's do that so that, uh, yeah, let's do that. I know I, ha I can see a number of chairs in front here. Uh, let's make sure that they are all occupied. And as we do that, I'll be requesting our ministers to wait on us and uh, distribute the envelopes. Uh, so that we can package our substances, uh, give our fast fruits, give our tithe, give our offering. We use envelopes not because of the amount, but because of the honor and to whom we give. We want to do it in a presentable manner, in an honorable manner. So if in case you need an envelope, and of course, I know we all do, indicate so that the ministers can come to you and serve you, take time and uh, package uh, package uh, uh, you are offering. There is one right here in front uh, that needs an envelope. Uh, take time and package if it is your tithe, uh, if it's your fast fruit or your offering. Uh, the details on the board, you can uh, use a pay bill. It is 698426. Uh, uh, the account number will be either the, the purpose of giving um, or you can send directly to the Mpesa. Or you also can send directly to the account by using 247247. And then the account number is 698426. I want to believe that uh, you have done it. Take time and pack it. The Bible says that we honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with all our increase and with the first fruit. Uh, honor the Lord with our possession and with the uh, first fruit of all our increase. Let's do that. Let's do that. Our giving is in honor. Our giving is the expression of the love we have for the Lord. Our giving is the expression of the worship, the worship uh, we have in our spirits to the Lord. If you have already done it, uh, please walk to the basket that is near you, uh, the nearest basket. Uh, drop your offering as we get ready to hear the ministry of the word. We bless the, uh, the Lord that in this house we have never been compelled, we have never been pushed uh, to give, we have never been taken advantage of, we give because of the understanding uh, we have that is expression of our love, our honor, and our worship to the Lord. Thank you for giving. Thank you for expressing your worship to the Lord this morning. And now, without uh, taking much time, I would want to call our father back on stage, Apostle James, to bring us uh, the ministry of the word. Let's put our hands together and appreciate our father, Apostle James, to bring us the ministry of the word. We love you. We honor you, sir. Well, are we settled? Some of us are still moving. If you are yet to move, please do that in this one minute so that we can uh, settle down. Thank you. Thank you. Some of us are still giving. Go ahead. Feel free. Uh, feel free to give. Thank you. Timothy, God bless you. Anyone else still giving? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the Bible in the book of Colossians chapter 1 
and read two verses, and then after that, we'll read very many other scriptures today. We'll be talking about the power of the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ, not any other cross. Today, the cross is used as an ornament, earrings and, and, and chains on our necks. But we are talking about the power of the cross of Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, are we there? I want to ask us to do something. We haven't done this for a long time. Standing up for the reading of the scriptures. Please stand up with me. Reading Colossians 1 verse 19 and 20. Colossians 1 verse 19 and 20. And because it is on the screens, let's read from the screen so that we can uh, read in unison and read as loud as we can. One, two, go. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Keep standing and lift your hand. Just ask that God will open your eyes and open your ears to hear his word this wonderful morning. Both hands if you can. And then lift your voice. This is prayer. This is prayer. This is prayer. It was at the cross, at the cross. It was at the cross. I'm praying that this morning someone will also. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross. Roll away. Just pray, just pray, just pray. This morning, lift your voice. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now. Father, we pray as we share your word today. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. Touch our lives, O oh God. May the power of the cross of Jesus be at work in each of us this morning. Be activated in each of us this morning. And become the order of the day from this morning. Even after this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen and take your seat. The power of the cross. Like I said, we're going to read very many scriptures today. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and look at verse 14. Ephesians 2 verse 14 says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. So who is Paul talking about? He is talking about Christ. He says he himself is our peace. Our peace is a person. Our peace is a person. The presence of that person, even Christ Jesus, in our lives, releases peace. The absence of he who is our peace in our lives leads to all manner of peacelessness, turmoil, trouble, pain, anxiety, and other related kind of manifestations. Now, peace is one of the most rare commodities on li in life on planet Earth today. Many people are not at peace. May and you know, where there's no peace, there is war. Many people are not at peace. They may look like, they may appear like they are 
having peace or that they are in peace. But the truth is many people are at war. At war with themselves, at war with their neighbors, at war with their relatives, at war with many others, and some are actually at war with themselves. But peace is so important. In life, and none of us can really live without that peace that only God can give. In the Bible, in the book of Isaiah 53 and verse 5 at the bottom there, says the chastisement for our peace was upon him. So one of the missions of Christ Jesus was to come and bring us peace. And one of the powers and blessings that we derive from the cross of Jesus is peace. And if we cannot look at any other thing this morning, let's, at look, let's look at this one thing, the peace that God has availed for us through the death of Jesus Christ. Man's peacelessness started in Genesis chapter 3, where God asked man three questions. Let's go to Genesis 3 and see the three questions. God asked man these three questions, and I believe he is asking the same question this morning. In Genesis 3 and verse 9, the first question is, where are you? If you find yourself in a place where you are distant from God, or not sensing his presence, then that simply means there is no peace in your life. Where are you? The next question God asked is in verse 11. Who told you that you were naked? Who brought to your attention? Who gave you the awareness that you are naked? If you go to chapter 2, you will see that both of them, male and female, were naked, but not ashamed. Meaning they were naked and not aware or naked, and it did not disturb them. But in Genesis 3, they are feeling naked, and they are hiding from God's presence, and God is asking, who told you that you were naked? Then the third question, have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Have you eaten? That's the third question. Have you eaten? In other words, have you broken my golden law? Have you sinned? against me? Have you disobeyed me? Three questions that reveal the fact that God was not at one moment. God and man were separated. And that's what sin does. Sin is a separator. Sin is a separator between God and man. His eyes are not blind. His ear is not deaf that he cannot hear us. The prophet says, but the, our sins separate uh, between us and God. So we thank God for the cross because at the cross, the sin question was dealt with. At the cross, the blood that will cleanse us, the blood that will renew us, the blood that will bring us back to God was shed and made available. In the cross, the enmity that was between us and God has been dealt with. And all we need now is believe in Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord and Savior in our lives. And the blessing and the benefit of the peace of God will be released into our lives. Can I hear an amen? amen? Ephesians 2 and verse 15 says, Having abolished in his flesh, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Jesus in his flesh, in his physical body, that was hanged on the cross. Jesus in that physical body, through that body, he abolished or he destroyed the enmity, the judgment, the peacelessness, the three questions that God has been asking in Jesus and through his flesh, that, that enmity or that peacelessness has been dealt with. That's why therefore it's important for us to understand what really happened when Jesus hung on the cross. And that's my assignment this morning. To show you what happened when Jesus hung on the cross. And so that you can appropriate in your own life. The blessing that was made available when Jesus hung on the cross. Hebrews 10 verse 19 to 22 says. Therefore brethren. Having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and a living way which he consecrated for us. 
through the veil that is his flesh. Through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. See what happened when he hung on that cross? That through the veil which is his flesh. Through the veil which is his flesh. No wonder when he hung on the cross, the veil in the temple cut into two. Let's have a look at that in Matthew 27. Matthew 27 verse 50 to 52. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and dying, the physical actual veil in the temple was cut into two. Matthew 27 verse 50 says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Why? Because Jesus is dead on that cross. And death simply means there was no more life in his flesh. His flesh was torn as a veil. When his flesh was being torn, when the blood was oozing out the blood that brings us peace. When that blood was oozing out, because the blood is the life of the flesh, when the blood was oozing out and the veil was being cut into two, the veil was being rendered, the veil was being rendered, you know, was being rendered, you know, dead. When the veil was being cut into two, the veil in the temple was torn into two also from top to bottom. The death of Jesus cut that veil that separated between us and God. That, veil, that death of Jesus uh, cut into two the, the veil that separated the holy of holies from the common people so that we can all have access to God. To death, religion likes to paint a picture that you are far away from God and that unless you do one or two things, you can never have access. Religion likes to put, paint a picture that the men of God, the pastors are the ones who are close to God and the people just fall from some place. Maybe they need to pay one or two uh, things here and there for them to access anything God made available for them. But I'm here to tell you that when Jesus died, the veil that kept you away from God, the veil that hindered you from seeing God has been cut into two. Now you can come boldly. You can access God even as much as you desire. Can I hear an amen? amen. There was an enmity. Way back Genesis 3, we have seen it. Enmity because of the sin of man. But now that enmity has been dealt with through the death of Jesus. God is not your enemy. You might have sinned even last night, but I'm here to tell you God is not mad about you. God is not your enemy. He used to be our enemy. And we used to be his enemies. But today, God is a friend because the enmity has been dealt with. Say amen. And let me show you what that enemy was. Romans 8, verse 6 to 7. How is and what is this enmity? How is it propagated? Romans 8, 6 to 7. For to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Nor indeed can be. The enmity was because of our carnality. Being sold to sin. But also being helpless. We were sold to sin, but we could not deliver ourselves from the bondage of sin. And every time God looked at man before the propitiation through the blood of Jesus, he saw man a sinner. He saw man a transgressor. He saw man in his iniquity. He saw man in his wickedness. He never saw him in the light of what he intended. His son made and created in his image and likeness. Don't bring back the enmity into your life after Jesus has brought you nigh, after Jesus has made you part of the family of God. By sliding back to carnality, the Bible says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Can I hear an amen? amen. When we encourage you to therefore walk upright and to walk with God and walk in the ways of God, it is not so that you can pass the, the, the religious standard of our church. It's not because we are afraid if you walk otherwise, you're going to put us to shame. We share the word of God and we encourage you to obey God and walk with God because it is good for you. 
Turn to your neighbor and tell him, oh, ha, walking with God is good for you. Not for the pastor, it is good for you. Come on, say that. Not for the pastor, it is good for who? It's not so that our church can be famed to be the church that has upright boys and girls. Not so. It is good for you. Because when you are spiritually minded, it gives you life and it gives you peace. And maybe we benefit out of the life and out of the peace that walking with God has produced in your own life. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. That's the mind that Satan activated in Adam and Eve when they desired to eat a fruit that was forbidden. When they desired to eat a fruit in direct contravention of God's will and God's word over their lives. That mind that favors, that mind that accommodates, that mind that will do anything to please the flesh is what is referred to as the carnal mind. And that mind is an enmity against God. James chapter 4 and verse 4 says that friendship with the world is an enmity with God. The cross of Jesus helps us to overcome the world. In fact, on that cross of Jesus, the world is crucified to us and we are also crucified. In other words, through the cross, we are no longer available to the world, but we are also not accessible anymore by the world through the cross. And so there's need to therefore reintroduce the message of the cross of Jesus, the importance of the message of the cross, the importance of the practice of the cross, because the cross avails the redemptive power of God in its entirety. And where the cross is discounted, where the cross is dishonored, when the cross is not regarded, people begin to walk in weakness as opposed to strength. They begin to walk in peacelessness instead of peace. They begin to walk in sickness instead of health. They begin to walk in weakness instead of the strength that God has intended for them. So the cross, the cross, the cross avails to us the power of God. I, I do know that earlier on this year we had our apostolic convocation and we really talked about the cross. Bishop Stephen Gashengo really talked about the cross and we are back to the same, same thing to tell you this, that a cross-less believer is a weak believer. It's the cross that releases into our lives the peace of God. It's the cross that avails in our lives the kingdom of God. The cross, there's a transaction that took place on the cross. There's a transaction that happens in our lives through the application of the cross of Jesus in our lives. The cross brings to an end carnality. The absence of the cross opens the door one more time for believers to begin to yield and to give themselves and to be drawn and dragged into the way of this world, the way of the flesh. First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. But how can a man not love the world if he does not have the cross? You either love the world, the cross, or you will end up loving the world. Do not love the world. Because all that is in the world is lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and pride of life. And all of that is not of the Father, but is of the world. If somebody loves the world, then the love of the, love of the Father is not in him. If one loves the world, the love of the Father, the blessings that come from the love, of the, the love of the Father cannot be found in that person's life. So we need to return to the cross. We need to understand the cross. We are using this occasion, the Easter holidays, where we remember, the whole world is remembering about the death and resurrection of Jesus. We use this occasion to remind you of the importance of the cross in your life. The cross avails the power of God into your life. And I will show you that shortly from the scriptures. Ephesians 2 verse 16 says, Ephesians 2 16 says, And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Through the cross, God has put to death the enmity. He has reconciled not only Jews and Gentiles, but he has also reconciled between man and God. Through the cross, the cross is the place of reconciliation. 
The cross is the place where two that are warring parties, two that are at loggerheads, two that are not at peace, are put into a state of being reconciled, a state of being at, at one, you know, at, atoned or at, at, in one place, you know, in, in, in an agreement. So through the cross, he put to death the enmity. Without the cross, you declare yourself God's enemy. And whether you like it or not, without the cross, you will walk back, you will go back to carnality, you will love the world one more time, and declare yourself, God does not say you are his enemy. He does not say he's your enemy. But without the cross, you slide back to a life where you live as if you are God's enemy, even though you're born again. Without the cross, you slide back to a life where you, by your actions and your way of life, you are declaring yourself to be God's enemy, even though he will not fight you. But through the cross, the enemy is put to death. Don't be God's son who lives like God's enemy. Let me say that again. Do not be God's son who lives like God's enemy. We know in, you know, in the society there are certain children um, that are, are giving their parents peacelessness. A very good example is that of Absalom, son of David. He was David's son in every respect. But we do know that David was running away from his own son. David was at no peace. He was fleeing, running for his life, his dear life, because of his son. When a born-again believer forgets the cross, its application and implications in the way we live, and our mind begins to become carnal, and begin to pick what is in the world. Because in the absence of the cross, the world resurrects. In the absence of the cross and the power of the cross, worldliness resurrects. But through the cross, the enmity is put to death. He made peace for us through the blood of his cross. He made peace. He appeased through the blood, but that blood was shed on the cross. There's something that happened when he hung on that cross. And we need every blessing and benefit that was availed for us on that cross. We need to study and understand and believe and apply in our lives the power God made available for us on that cross. Because a crossless believer is a weak believer. Let me show you a scripture in Romans 3. Romans 3 from verse 21 uh, to 26. Romans 3, 21 to 26 says, But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through the faith in Jesus Christ, to, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace, look at that, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation. And propitiation simply means the action of appeasing a God, it is the action of bringing, at, uh, bringing atonement, bringing to a place of agreement. So God set forth a propitiation in Christ Jesus by his blood. It's not his hair. It is not his shoes. It is his blood. So the cross is made important not because of the kind of wood that was used. Not because of the kind of nails that were used to nail him. What makes the cross that valuable and that important is the blood that was shed on the cross. The mention of the cross should remind us of the blood that was shed on the cross. The power of the cross comes out of the blood that was shed on that cross. So God set him forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. 
now that the sacrifice has been made, now that the blood has been shed, all that is remaining is for us to have faith. Everyone say, have faith. All that is remaining is for us to believe. Everyone say, believe. All that we need to do is to believe. All that we need to do is have faith in Jesus, that he took away my sins, that he died my death, that he took away the enmity, that by the blood of his cross, I am at peace with God. When you believe, that's how we appropriate the power made available on the cross for our lives. That enmity, for those that are in Christ, is now dead. That enmity has been brought to an end. It's been brought to an end. When Jesus died for us, he put to death all that was against us. When Jesus died for us, he put to death all that was against us. And all that was against us has been put to death. All we need today is to believe and appropriate that which has been made available for us. This is how it works. This is how it works. After a long day working in whatever circumstances, sweating, all the dust and all of that, you come back home. And your spouse, your neighbor, your relative, your friend says, hey, you look very dirty. And they make water and soap and a towel available. So that you can walk to the bathroom, apply the water, apply the soap, use the towel, and become clean. The water, the soap, the towel, those are symbols. That's your that's your cleanliness existing in that format, but waiting for your action. And in the kingdom of God, in the new covenant, our action is simply to believe. We're not having to die for our own sins. We're not having to pay some money for our own sins. All we do is simply believe. How I pray that everyone in this service, before we leave this place today, will believe that it is in that your peace and joy is found in Jesus and stop the seeking, the searching, the helter skelter running up and about. And from this day, settle your gaze and your look on him. For indeed, in and through him, when he died on the cross, he made available your peace and your life. Let's go to Colossians 2. Colossians 2, I hope you're not going to be tired. I am trying to give you as many scriptures as possible. Because I will not be in this mood of preaching about the power of the cross next Sunday. But I have to give you something enough uh, to be the basis of your belief. Plus, some of us also may be called upon some days and place to also share on the same. Colossians 2 from 11. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. In him, in him we were circumcised. The putting of the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God. Look at that. In him you were raised with him through faith. If you remove faith, then there can be no access to all that God made available for us in Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. It, with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Look at that. That God worked it in Christ way back then, so that we here today, on believing, can access all of that. That has been made available for us. And that now that he made it available way back there, if we don't believe in him right here, we will be living life right here, as if that was never made available when he died. For when he died, he died for all of us. Then verse 14, a very important one. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. There is a time God had a record against you. There is a time heaven had a fire. There is a time when God kept something or had something against you. But when Jesus on the, hung on the cross, shed his blood, the veil of his flesh was cut into two. At the same time, the veil of the temple was being cut into two. He wiped out the handwriting of requirements 
that was against us, and those are the requirements of the law of God, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it, where? To the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. It's either the blood of Jesus saves you, or you save yourself with your own blood. Now, many people, even in church circles, many people, even who sing about the blood of Jesus and about the cross of Jesus, have not by faith appropriated in their lives the salvation package made available over 2,000 years ago by Jesus, and they live today as though God is their enemy and he's not, because they have declared themselves God's enemy by living a life which is not in conformity to the standard of God, which is life on the cross. Some of what speaks against you comes from your gener generations. I don't know what your grandfather did. I don't know what your grandmother did. I don't know who they shook hands with. I don't know where they took their last supper. You don't know. You may, most likely don't have no idea. In fact, some of us never saw our great-grandparents. We don't know how tall, how short, how rich, how poor they were. Now, that lineage of the first Adam is what God had something against. And if we will not appropriate the blood of the last Adam, even Christ Jesus, we begin to expose ourselves to the handwritings or anything God had against some of those in the generations that came before us. We begin to live life as though the Redeemer has not come, as though the Savior is not here. I encourage all of us sitting in this room, the many more watching us on the live stream this morning, the many more that will watch this program here after all over the world. I want to encourage you to appropriate the salvation package made available by God through the death of Jesus by simply believing in him and confessing Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life. Do not live as though the water and the soap are not existing. Don't try to look for explanations why you are still dirty. The water has been made available. The soap is available. Jesus died, made salvation available, redemption available, our propitiation. I mean, he appeased God. And by the way, since Jesus died on the cross, God is no longer angry or mad with man. Even the witches. Because their witchcraft was covered by the sacrifice given on that cross. The sacrifice of the Son of God. That precious, incorruptible seed of the blood of God's Son appeased God. That's what we mean by propitiation. That's propitiation. He, God saw that. God saw that and he is pleased. And all that man needs to do now is to believe. What many have done is to join churches. What many have done is to make sure they have a strategic position of service or otherwise in the church but not have a personal encounter and an ongoing experience of the power of the cross. When you encounter the cross, you will be born again. When you encounter the cross, when you come into contact with the blood of Jesus, you'll be born again. Something will change about you. Your nature will change. Your mindset will change. Jesus wiped the handwriting of requirements that was against us. That was contrary to us. He disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them. He triumphed over them in it. That is in the cross. Your victory has been won. Your deliverance has been worked out already. Your release has been negotiated already. But it is through the death of one in whom you must believe. All we need to do is only believe. Only believe that he is Lord. Allow him to be Lord in your life. And you see what the cross can do in your life. Say amen, someone. Amen. Ephesians 2.17 says, And he, that is Christ, came and preached peace. Peace which is a grand subject, grand theme, in the redemptive story, the redemptive plan of God. He came and preached peace to us who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. 
Christ came to preach peace. He came to tell us the Father is no longer angry with you. He is no longer your enemy. He's not chasing you anymore. He's not after you. He's, does not, he's not after killing you anymore. I have come to pour my blood that to appease him so that on behalf of all humanity, I can please the Father because Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29. Not sins as in many, but sin as in the one which is a nature. Not actions, but a nature. He came. He has already come. The struggles we are having with sin and the repercussions we are all suffering because of sin, I think is because we have not understood what was made available through the death of Jesus. And if we have, maybe we have not then known how to appropriate to walk in the reality of this new redemption. He came and preached. You see, Reconciliation has to be preached. Propitiation has to be preached. I stand this morning to tell you, God is at peace with you. Maybe you are at peace, you are not at peace with yourself or your neighbors or someone because of not appropriating what Jesus made available. But as far as God is concerned, he is at peace with you. Make peace with him. God is not at war with you, but most of us are at war with God. Many of us are living lives of disobedience. Many live lives that are not pleasing unto God. And by so doing, they are declaring themselves God's enemy. But praise God, it does not matter how much man provokes God into wrath and anger, he will not go back there again because of the one and final sacrifice on the cross of Jesus. We come to preach reconciliation this morning. We come to tell you, be reconciled back to God. We come to tell you, brother, sister, come back home. We come to talk to the prodigal son. The fact that you walked away from home don't mean you're not your father's, your daddy's son. You still are. In fact, when the Bible says when the prodigal son came back to his senses, he said, how many servants in my father's house? He did not say, how many servants in Mr. Kimondo's? How many servants in Mr. Ochieng's? He didn't say, how many servants in Mr. Wamalwa's? He said, how many servants in my father's house? Walking away from home never meant he was no longer his daddy's son. When he came back home, he found his father, not his neighbor, not his sponsor, but his father waiting for him. And his father said, this my son was dead. He is now back. And the father gave to his son a ring and shoes and a robe. And a feast. Some believers live in that place so far away from home, so far away from our Father, so far away from the benefits and blessings and resources according to God's plan. Because we declared ourselves as enemies, we said, I want to leave home, we ran away. We went to some place, some bushes, some place, living life, reckless living, as the prodigal son did. But even so, the Father still says this morning, Come back home. This morning I sensed the Holy Spirit speaking through me, telling each of us, come back to that tight, close, intimate relationship with God. Don't allow the world to convince you that you don't need as much of him. Don't allow the world to convince you to mix a bit of faith in Christ and a bit of faith in Dinia Musambo and a bit of faith in the other thing and uh, you end up with a confused mixture. Keep the purity of your faith and focus on Jesus. Don't allow the cross to be emptied of its power by the world. The world is busy, busy emptying the, cr the cross of its power. I saw a posting yesterday where somebody says, when Jesus died, the key, the, the key thing was the cross and the, the blood he shed. But this guy says, but today the key thing is believers are collecting eggs. I don't know what they call those eggs, but there are some eggs that are collected over Easter. Is it so? What are they, what are they called? Eggs. They are eggs. Are they special eggs or are they chocolates or what are they? Jemo, you have no idea. Ask your neighbor there. She knows. And you can see there is a well-choreographed ideology by the world to shift us from the cross 
to eggs and to WRC. Whatever that means. Reconciliation gives us access to the kingdom of God. We all need to have access to God. God has made available to you, my sister, that you can access him anytime. In an interview room, in a church service, in your family gathering, God has made himself available to us. And now because of being brought nigh by Christ, we have access, we have access to our Father. Many believers are living life which is by far less than what has been made available for them. It's like if I took you to a hotel, say the Stanley, or which one, Jemo? Stanley. And I told you, please have, have lunch, take lunch. And uh, you were there wondering whether really I can afford. And I can read that, so I said, no, 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 feel free. It's on me, it's on me. You have lunch, in fact, you can have five course. You begin with the soup, go all the way up to dessert. And you look at the menu and you say, hey, hey, hey this is too much. Hey, that's too much. L let me do this. Uh, waiter, hey, we ask dogo na tomato. Because you saw that it's costing 450 shillings. But I told you I'm going to take care of that. And many believers, here we are, we are believing in Jesus, but we have never understood the package made available. We have, known the, we have never known the power that was made available when he hung on that cross. And one of the things that was made available is peace. Peace has become very rare today. You ask the doctors, they will tell you that some of the conditions, are they called psychosomatic? Is that the way you use that word in such a place? Some of the conditions we have have to do with the psych. People have no peace. People have no peace. The driver has no peace. The matatu makanga has no peace. The passengers have no peace. The, po the policeman has no peace. The engineer working on the road has no peace. And where there is no peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, things will be in pieces, P-I-E-C-E-S, pieces. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you either have peace, P-E-A-C-E, or your things will be in pieces. P I E C E C S. My brothers and sisters, I stand this day as a voice telling you be reconciled back to God. Come back home. Walking away don't mean you are no longer standing you are. Picking a snare from the wall don't mean you are no longer standing. You still are. I remember those days growing up. You could tell who has obeyed mommy or daddy by the, the positions we would take on the table. Never mind that was not a table the way you know a table. But there was still a table anyway around the fire. Those who knew they have done something and suspect that maybe, maybe daddy or mommy is aware, they would, like, they would love to sit behind someone. And they, were, they avoided eye contact with mommy like this. They would be looking at her, and whenever she looks her direction, their direction, they just come behind here. And just by the architecture of how we sat around the fire, you knew who is an obedient child and who is not. In fact, those who knew had they obeyed the command given earlier on in the day, they were not only sitting near the, you know, our parents, but they would come and hang around our mommy's neck. But when you know you are at loggerheads, in fact, you make sure you don't come home very early. In fact, you make sure that you don't come home when they are still awake. Does that happen to, in your village or just my village? Can we show you P.O. Box 509? Now it's 509. P.O. Box 509, Roido. Come near to your father. Come near to your father. The cross invites us to an intimacy with God. That's why on that cross, for the first and maybe the only time, Jesus sends a disconnection from the Father. On that cross, they'll put up the scripture shortly. On that cross, he cried and he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakithani. 
saying, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? The only time the son, the son ever descends a disconnection all his life was when he hung on that cross and he put upon himself the sin of the world. When the father saw the sin of the world upon the son, for a moment he turned away. And the son sensed it. If the son sensed the absence or disconnection from the father because of dying for us on the cross, therefore it means that through his death, the son gives us access. Everyone say access. Not just access to the common court or the holy place, but access to the holy of holies. The son gives you an access by the same spirit to the father. Say another amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Shout a louder amen. amen. That through the cross, God has made a way for you to be as close as necessary to our heavenly father. And we have access to Father, meaning, meaning we are not just accessing him as God, creator, but we are accessing him as our Father because through the cross we are enjoined into the family of God. The family of God is made up of a people that have appropriated the cross in their own lives. And they live in the peace that is made available through the death of Jesus Christ. No wonder then, 2 Corinthians 5, from verse 18 to 19, the Bible says, now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. There's no other way God reconciles man to himself. Not through religion, not through fast fruit, not through tithe, not through seed, not through some, something like they do in the, in the Philippines. Some of them offer themselves to be killed, actually. Not through some, uh, through, not through some marching through some streets with a cross on the uh, on your back, not through any of that. He reconciles himself, us to himself through Jesus Christ. Our reconciliation is through a person. It's through the son. Because we are being reconciled and brought back into the sonship position. Through Jesus Christ, he has reconciled us to himself and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ Reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Being reconciled to God, being reconciled to God, reconciled to God positions you to become a minister of reconciliation. Now, each one of us is surrounded by people who are at war. People that are not at peace. Parents. Siblings, cousins, neighbors, friends, enemies. And they are waiting for someone through whom God can minister reconciliation to their lives. It takes one who is reconciled to reconcile others. It takes one who knows the Father to bring others into the same communion or fellowship with the Father. When we are reconciled, then through Christ, we receive the ministry of reconciliation. You are supposed to be a reconciler. But you cannot reconcile others if you are yourself not reconciled. If you are staying so far away. If you are living like you are a stranger, a neighbor. If you are living as though you are not part of the common world of Israel. You cannot be the one God would use to reconcile others. My prayer is that God will use each one of us to help people around us that are peaceless. You don't have to go too far away. You are desk mate, most likely. You are neighbor, most likely. Those women fetching water with you at the tap. Unajua zamani tulikuwa tunaenda kuhubiria wanadhambi huko kwa crusade huko uwanjani. But today, wherever you turn there will be several people that need to be reconciled back to God. But only one who is reconciled can be able to reconcile others. Let's have a look at 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2 verse 3 to 7. Says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men. 
to be saved. Did you see that? He desires all men to be saved. All means all. All includes all. And if God desires that all men be, should be saved, then God will need a man or a woman through whom he is bringing them into salvation. If God desires that all men be saved, all he needs is a man reconciled to himself who can be used by God to reconcile others. I can tell you this. If we understood this ministry of reconciliation, we should have had more visitors than the few who stood up when Isaac asked. Because there are certain people we have been affecting the whole week. Some even ask for our numbers. Some even ask the question, where do you got, go to church? Some even say that I would want to come and meet your pastor. Because throughout the week, through whatever we are doing, we are telling men by words and actions to be reconciled back to God. For they have seen the fruit of the reconciliation that is at work in our own lives. We were speaking last night to pastors in the UK. We had a Zoom meeting. And several of them asked several questions. And one of the questions was, how do we do evangelism in the UK? Because the context is very different. You can't just put up a stage over there and begin to preach. They, they, they'll apprehend you. And uh, while as we do not have time to really go into the depth of the sin, but I do believe that the greatest and the most powerful form of evangelism or witnessing is when people see the changed life in you that came as a result of Jesus Christ. They will want to find out what made you this much different. How come you smile when things go wrong? How come you shed tears when you are happy? How come you are not bothered? How can you sleep in the storm, Jesus? But when the power of the cross is not at work in you, you look like a mere man. Nothing different from us. But when the power of the cross that brings us close and everyone can sense this man seems to live in another world, yet he is with us in this office. That power, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you, access that power. It will give you peace. That power will give you redemption. That power will draw you nigh and give you access to God. For there is one God and one mediator. Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Did you know that your savior is also your mediator? Mediator here means reconciler, intercessor, intervener, and arbitrator. All that he negotiated on the cross. The father was not mad anymore about those who would believe in the offering and sacrifice of God, even in Christ Jesus. He appeased the father. He pleased the father. You know, that is so liberating to people like me who understand what we are sharing here. Because there were certain things that worked against me. There were records against me. You know, you don't know me, you people. You don't know me. You don't know me. You do not know what I was and what I did and where I had been to before I found Jesus. You don't even know my generations and my relatives. You don't know what are the common trends in our family. There seems to be certain things that work in my family. But when the cross was introduced, it changed everything. It changed my direction, my destiny, my future, my preferences in life, longevity of life on earth. Just because I appropriated, not just historically, but on an ever-increasing manner, perpetually in our lives. For Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him take up his cross daily. So the cross is not a historical something that happened. We appropriate it. We live that life where we are crucified to the world. But where also through the same cross, we are not available to the world, and the world is crucified to us, and even if you wanted to reach out for it, and you are in the cross and walking according to the cross, the world is still not available to you. We have a mediator. We have an intercessor. And even if we miss the way, this one will talk to the Father. He is in the Father's immediate presence. He is there as our intercessor, our intervener, our reconciler, our arbitrator. 
Aren't you grateful for Jesus? That forever he talks to the Father, forever he prays, forever he intercedes before the Father. He, is, he appears in the Father's physical presence as the evidence of your redemption. He is there as the witness that it's supposed to be well with them. And that whatever would have been demanded of them are made available. And there is a witness of the blood of Jesus that was sprinkled in that actual altar called heaven itself. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. Ephesians 2.19 now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. Fellow citizens. Our citizenship is not an economic program. Our citizenship in the kingdom is not about money and wealth. But it's about being enjoined to a family, watch this, which is the dynasty. We are not becoming wealthy. We have been born into the wealthy family. We are not hustling to make ends meet. We have been born into the family where the father created all that men are killing themselves and killing one another for. We have been born into. It's called the, 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 the household of God. We are fellow citizens. We are in the commonwealth of God. And commonwealth does not mean commonwealth, where money, resources. Commonwealth means this dynasty and kingdom where all that our father owns is ours because we have put our faith in him and it begins to manifest day by day, step by step. If you are born again, you are a citizen in God's kingdom. You are not a squatter. You are not an immigrant. You are a citizen. Lift your hand and say, I am a citizen in the kingdom of God. Say it again with the manager one more time. I am a citizen in the kingdom of God. How do you say that in Swahili? Is it mimi ni mwana nchi ama ni mwenye nchi? Mwenye nchi. Mwana, mwenye, mwinyi. Reconciliation brings us to citizenship and membership in the family of God. Reconciliation brings us into citizenship. When we got born again, we did not join a religion. We joined a family. When we got born again, we did not join empty, an empty system of religion. But we became citizens and members in the family of God. As we begin to close this up, let me tell you this. Jesus died on the cross to take away the curse of the law from us. Galatians 3, verse 10 to 14 says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. No man ever kept all the law. Not even Moses himself. God, God got angry with Moses the day he delivered to him the law. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Even in the economy of the law, if anyone lived, it was not because they received the law, but because they believed in what the law said. God's mind has always been that the just would live by faith. In other words, the just, those that are made righteous, when they hear, like our father Abraham, he only heard God's word, believed it, and obeyed it, and was made righteous. And he lived. Yet the law of verse 12 says, it's not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cast is everyone who hangs on a tree. You can refer to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. Cast is anyone who hangs on the tree. Deuteronomy 21, verse 23. 
Then here, verse 14 of Galatians 3 says, And the blessing of Abraham, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit through faith. Not through observance of the law. Not works of the law, but faith. Brothers and sisters, the one thing that we need to do to access and experience the power of the cross is belief. Not to be hanged. Not to pay for your sins. We don't believe you can pay any amount of money for your sins. We don't believe that we can baptize you and the water deals with your sins. We don't even believe that you can take Holy Communion and the bread and the wine deals with your sins. We believe that when you have faith in him, you have faith in him, as simple as it might sound or appear to be, that's how the promise is made available. He died to remove the curse of the law. The law had cursed us by demanding of us things that we could not keep. We are not under that law if you be in Christ Jesus. The veil has been removed. The law has been removed. The veil is removed. That veil still remains as long as they read Moses, the law. But when a man is in Christ, you and I, in Christ, and the many more that are going to give their life to Jesus this morning, when a man is in Christ, that's the end of the law and the beginning of a new dispensation of the grace of God. He bearing his cross, Jesus, went out to a place called the place of a scar. John 19 verse 17. He bearing his cross, went to a place called the place of a scar. That's Golgotha. The place where the cross was planted is called Golgotha. And Golgotha means the place of the scar. Watch what happened to his skull. When he was hanging on that cross, they put a crown of thorns, and thorns are symbolic of a curse. The crown is on the head. The cross is on a place called the place of a skull. Because the truth is, the curse that came upon man had something to do with man's mentality, man's thinking. Bearing his cross to Golgotha, where they crucified him, and there were two others. Verse 19. Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. Not on his clothes, but on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, all the known major languages of the day. It was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So they could read and understand what was written. Therefore, the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but write, he said, I'm the king of the Jews. Pilate answered what I have written, I have written. For it was in fact not Pilate writing. It was the hand of God. Yeah. On that cross the inscription was. Here is the king. Of the Jews. Salvation of the Jews before it comes to the Gentiles. It was the declaration that this is the king. Of or among the Jews. Or the king born from among the Jews. For the whole world. That inscription. Cancelled what was standing. And speaking against you. That inscription by Pilate, a Gentile, is the, the, the new script. And so coming to Jesus, believing in the finished work, receiving into your life, appropriating into your life, the power of the cross means you are brought back into the kingdom of God and brought back into the kingship of Christ. The cross, the cross. Is a form of empowerment. The cross. Is a form of empowerment. 
Without the cross, you can never have a crown. It's at the cross that you get a crown. They give him a crown of thorns, symbolic of the curse, so that he can give to you the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of joy, the crown of beauty, the crown of royalty. In the cross lies our victory over the world. Galatians 6 verse 14. God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. The presence of the cross in your life, my brother, my sister, means you are not available to the world and the world is not available. And God loves it that way. The cross is a dividing line. Have you applied the cross? Have you received the blessing and the power of the cross of Jesus? Is the cross at work in you? Has the cross divided between you and the world? He says, God forbid that I should boast except in the cross. The cross is something to be proud about, to boast about. It brings dignity. It brings joy. It brings victory. The cross lifts people. The cross declares the lordship of Jesus of our lives. That cross avails reconciliation. In that cross, Christ triumphed over the adversity and judgment. And you need to carry your cross every day. Let's finish with that scripture. Luke 9. Luke 9, verse 23 to 27. This will be our last scripture because of time. And then we'll pray. Luke chapter 9. It's on the screen. Read with me from verse 23 to 27. One to God. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. How many times? How many days? Let him take up his cross daily and... 24, for for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you, truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death. We need the cross. Without the cross, our lives will degenerate to self-destruction. What profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world? Gets all the money, all the houses, or the contracts, or the tenders, or the mashambas, or the most precious things in this world. What profit is there? Were we born really? Is that the main thing that we should be preoccupied with? Is that why we're here? To pick and gain and acquire one or two things around? And while as that might be important, is there something more important? Our cause that is of greater worth. That's the question Jesus is addressing here. What profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world? And is himself destroyed or lost? But how, a man, how is a man saved from destruction? And, a self, and especially self-destruction. How is a man redeemed from the snare of this earth? How is a man secured and succored? In what? What's the divine system of human preservation? How did God intend that a man would, by the way he lives, he walks, preserve his goings and make his ways pleasing unto God? This is in verse 23. Take up your cross daily and follow him. Because when you take up your cross, 
And that cross is symbolic of a life of dependence on him. Number two, a life of self-denial. Dependence on him, self-denial, and thirdly, a life of death to self. Every day. Through that then, the power made available when Jesus died on that cross. The power that could rend into two the curtain that divided between man and God. When we take up the cross, that curtain remains cut, remains removed and drawn away and giving us access to God in every way. The cross. How I pray that beyond Easter, even after this service, that's why I gave you so many scriptures, we can all understand and have faith and lift our eyes to God and begin to seek to reach out and access the redemptive power of God that will save, that will change, that will redeem and deliver you. Jesus became the scapegoat. Remember God telling Moses to bring two goats. One he would offer as a sacrifice to God. The other one the priest would lay hands on that, speak all the sins of the people onto the goat and send the goat to, a, to, a, to the wilderness so that the sins of the people can be taken away and forgotten. That's what God desires for us. That every sentence that was against us because of, of our faith in Christ Jesus, it can be taken away from us. Some of us have had some guilt, conscience about something. Some of us have been condemned about something. Some of us have been having peacelessness about issues that no one has no clue, no idea about. But there has been this constant conversation, if I can call it thus, between you and God, your spirit and God's own spirit. Where God's spirit has been convicting you. And you know, Godless sorrow comes out of the conviction of the spirit. And it leads to repentance. It leads to peace. And Godless sorrow is so different from the kind, the worldly sorrow, where people only feel sorrowful because they feel awful or because they have been discovered or because of the aftermath or the result, the repercussions of some of their actions. But Godless sorrow, even when no one has any clue of what is going on in your own personal private life, if you are truly born again, the spirit will convict you. Not convince, convict. And that sorrow leads to, not to death, but it leads to life. Godless sorrow leads to repentance. What a wonderful service this morning for all of us. If you need to repent. If you need to talk to God and ask for forgiveness about something. What a wonderful service. If you are with us today and you have never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life. And you have been a member here. You have been visiting our church. You have been our friend and you have been enjoying our services. I challenge you this day. Begin the journey. Please don't remain in a place where you think you are saved. Or you guess you are saved. Or you imagine you are saved. Or you think because I'm in Fountain Gate, I'm saved. Come to the place where we have the assurance. You know that you know that you know. You are born again. And in case you have been thinking maybe you are, maybe you are not. It is better to get saved the second time than to get saved at no time because you assumed you are. I'm encouraging all of us in this room here today. Come to the cross. That blood shed on that cross was shed because of your sins. Without the cross, you bear your own sins. Without the cross, you save yourself by your own blood. But by the cross, it's no longer your sacrifice, it will be your faith. For God received this one sacrifice that was once and for all given. The sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. That's what we need. That's what we need. When this blood touches any life, 
it changes your bloodline. When this blood touches any life, it changes your destiny. Don't assume you're born again because you are born in church, you were dedicated in church, your, pa your parents were in church, your grandparents are born again. Don't assume. This is a very personal moment of self-evaluation. Have you appropriated the cross of Jesus? Have you accepted that sacrifice he made into your own life? Have you applied the power, the life, the forgiveness that he availed? For some of us, we got born again some time ago, but with the time, our hearts have become so hardened against God. You need to come back to the cross. The cross has a way of breaking the hardness of our hearts and the hardness of our heads. Just like they pierced his skull with those thorns, the cross will pierce the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the pride of of life. This day, our Father calls on us to be reconciled to Him. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the name, peace, hands. Washed me in your cleansing. Now all I know. Your forgiveness and grace. All is the seated on the throne. We crown you now with me. I need to do an altar call here and I'll not give categories those who want this those who want that those who want that although I know there are no I know there are different people who want different encounters but I want to ask you if you really honor the sacrifice of God of Jesus on the cross and you have a simple prayer God may all that you made available for me when Jesus hung on the cross become my portion this day and continue. I want to ask all those who have that confession or prayer to come and stand here with me. All of you, just come. Just come quickly. Come quickly. I don't mind if you all come. This is the sign that you have understood what we are sharing here. This is also the sign that there's a humility of heart this morning. When you come to the front, lift up your hand. Begin to pray for yourself. For there is power. There is power. There is power that sets men free. There is power that cancels any handwriting that has been speaking against you. Words of men. The results of some things you did in the past. God forgave you but you have never been able to forgive yourself. You always remember, you always remember, you always reminded. You always remember this thing is always before you. 
Why don't you lift your hand and confess whatever it is, confess it. Repent. Whatever it is, repent about it. And after repenting, confess Jesus, Lord and Savior in your life. Say, Jesus, your sacrifice is enough. It's enough. It's enough. Your blood is enough. Your word is enough. Your spirit is enough. Begin to ascend now in faith. Begin to ascend in faith. Lift your voice. If you came to the front, please, I ask, want to ask you to lift your voice in prayer. Rise above that guilt. Rise above that condemnation. Rise above that fear. Maybe someone cast you. Maybe someone spoke something. Bible says, cast no cause has no effect. Which means if a curse has a cause, it can have an effect. Maybe you did something somewhere that annoyed someone, that angered someone. But today you know that you don't have to shed your blood now. The blood of Jesus has been shed. All you need is confess Jesus as Lord. Tell him Jesus, Jesus, I put my faith in you. Tell him Jesus, I put my trust in you in front and at the back all over this room tell him jesus i'll not carry this guilt no more i'll not carry this condemnation come on somebody lift your voice tell him i'll not carry it anymore because on the cross you became a curse for me on the cross you bore my curses my pains my peacelessness on the cross you bore the enmity God is no longer my enemy. He is my father. Jesus, I confess you as Lord. Yes, you are not only the king of the Jews. You are the king in my life. You have given me access now to the father by faith. And I raise my voice. And I confess you, Jesus, as Lord in my life. Jesus, Savior. Confess him, confess him this day. Invoke the name of Jesus in your life, in your business, in your family, in the work of your hands, in your studies. Lift, 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 lift a voice. Lift a cry, lift a cry. Lift up a cry. Jesus, have mercy on me. Like blind mud myers, I cry this day. Redeem me, deliver me. For you are the propitiation. Yes, you are. Through you, we have the atonement. Your blood was the blood of the atonement. God is not my enemy. I'm not God's enemy. A son of God. I confess my liberty in Christ. I confess my freedom in Christ. I'm not cursed. I'm not cursed. Say it, I am blessed. Come on, somebody say, I am blessed. I am blessed in Christ Jesus. I am blessed. The work of my hands is blessed. Fruit of my womb is blessed. My family is blessed. My mind is blessed. I'm not cast. I'm not cast because there's one who hung on the cross and he got the curse. He carried the curse. I declare from this day I will enjoy the blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the fullness of the blessing because of Christ, because of Christ. Where I was rejected, from now I'll be favored. Where I had no peace, from now I have, I'll have peace. Where I had no joy, from now I'll have joy. Where I had no peace, from now I'll have peace. Make it a worship now. Make it a worship. Make this a worship now. Give him glory for redemption. Give him glory for freedom. Give him glory for healing. Give him glory for the release. Give him glory for a new beginning. Come on, make this a worship now. Make it a worship. Let the earth hear his voice. Let the earth hear the song of the saints. Yes, yes, yes. Mara raga sanda rabo share mariando rubo shire rebo rana rabo. We worship you, sweet Lamb of God. Lamb of God. 
Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. My sin is not held against me. My sin was put on the body of the Son of God so that when I believe, I can receive the righteousness which is by faith. Yes. Would you raise your hands and make this a worship? Would you sing the Lord a new song? At the top of your voice, would you give him glory and honor this morning? Lift your voice and say, Tetelestai, Estai, it's done. It's done. Jesus said, it is finished. Tetelestai, it's finished. By faith we access, by faith we access. Come on, make a faith confession about your life. Whatever you sense in your spirit to confess, confess it. Come on, say it, say it. I'm no longer the tail. In Christ Jesus, I'm the head. Oh yes, I will not be rejected from this day. The cross of Jesus gives me access. I will not feel distant anymore from God. For the cross draws me nigh. The cross makes me part of the commonwealth of Israel. Two more minutes, lift your voice and give glory to God. Everybody, everybody. At the top of your voice, yes, yes. Give him glory. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. No one can do this for you. No one can do this for you. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the redemption. Thank you for the cleansing. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for being born again. Thank you for the new life in Christ. Are finding new freedom in Christ. Men are finding new joy in Christ. This is why he died. This is why he died. That you may taste freedom. That's the taste of freedom. Oh yes, that I declare freedom over your life. You are free from any condemnation. There is deliverance taking place even right now. Some of us had demons that are lurking around us, following us and tracking us. But in the name of Jesus, because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, be free. Be free. Be delivered. Be loosed. Be released from every manner of bondage. In the name of Jesus. He came to set the captives free. You are 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 free. Remain standing where you are. Remain standing where you are. And if you can put your hands down, but remain standing or kneeling wherever you are. If you are in this service and you are not born again, I would like to minister to you by leading you to Christ. Lift up your hand like this. Kama uko katika ibada hii na hujaokoka, inua mkono tukuombee ili uokoke. Asante. Mwingine. I can now, I can see you my brother there. I can see you my brother here. Someone else uko kwa ibada hii lakini haujaokoka mkono juu. 
hata kama ni kule nyuma inua mkono sitauona nani mwingine Someone help me bring these two men that man over there and this man over here please come right here It's our joy to lead you to the Lord Let me ask the church to rejoice with these two men These two men Some of our pastors and leaders can come and help me Tuwapigie makofi mara tena Asante Na tupigie Bwana Yesu makofi kwa kuwaokoa asubuhi ya leo Some of our pastors can come and stand behind each one of them as we pray with them. Please talk to them and find out they understand what we are saying what we are doing before we pray. Ni vizuri kuhakikisha wako na wanaelewa na wako na imani. Ah isiwe ni mambo tu ya kidini tu lakini wanaelewa hiyo tunasema. Asante. Asante. Baki mahali uliko please ndio tuwamalizie hawa alafu tutawa maliza surface pamoja Go ahead and begin to lead them in prayer lead them in salvation lead them in salvation lead them in confessing Jesus as Lord and Savior in their lives The rest of us can point our hands towards them as they are being delivered tuwaombe pia wanapokombolewa Uh, wengine wamefungwa na vifungo fulani fulani lakini leo hii nguvu ya msalaba wa Yesu inavunja kila laana kila pepo kila nguvu kila ngome kila sauti kila rekodi iliyowekwa kinyume ya maisha, ya maisha yao kila sauti iliyonenwa kinyume cha maisha yao tuombeeni tafadhali kila mtu waombe hata wewe siku uliokoka tulikuombea chukua hii dakika moja waombe hawa ndugu zetu ili waokoke na waweze kudumishwa na nguvu za Mungu waweze, waweze kuishi kama wana wa Mungu kuanzia siku ya leo even if it was not for anyone else this service was, was worth it the sacrifice was worth it because of these two souls here coming to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ thank you Lord thank you Lord Father I want to thank you for the saving power made available through the death of Jesus on the cross And thank you for your word we have shared here. Thank you for the faith in my two brothers. They have believed in you and they have confessed you in public. And as according to your word we now do know that by confessing you Jesus as Lord and Savior, they have been saved. Thank you for forgiving them. Thank you for cleansing them. Thank you for giving them another chance in life. Thank you for giving them a new beginning this day. Indeed this day they are born again we the church of jesus receive them to the body of christ and we rejoice with them for this the new found life in christ amen i don't want to go to the other categories of people that we need to pray for but wherever you are believe that god has heard you and has answered you and as before you go back to your seat you want to go back to your seat if you believe that things have changed because of the prayer of faith. If you still feel things have not changed, uh, we are not in the hurry. But if you believe God has had and changed something, then you can go back to your seat. These two brothers will follow Isaac, or is it Nicholas, or is it Timothy? Uh, Isaac will take care of them.